The story behind the real Black Panther, Man Samosa. When you think of wealth, you probably think of Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, whose riches we can count in dollars. But do you know, all their wealth in total won't even come close to the richest human of all the time in the world history. True, in the 14th century, there was an emperor who was so enormously wealthy. Online articles in the 21st century have claimed that his wealth was too vast to be imagined. He is none other than Mansa Musa, the legendary ruler of the vast West African Empire of Mali, lived from 1280 to 1337. In 2012 US website Celebrity Net Worth estimated Mansa Musa's wealth at 400 billion dollars. But economic historians say that his wealth is impossible to pin down to a number. Keep watching this video to know how Mansa Musa became so unimaginably wealthy and what did he do with all those untold riches. Mansa Musa came to the power as the king of the Mali Empire in West Africa in 1312 CE after the previous king Abu Bakr II from whom he to serve as deputy. Abu Bakr II went missing on a voyage he took by sea to find the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. Mansa Musa inherited a kingdom that was already wealthy and prosperous. But his work in expanding trade made Mali the wealthiest kingdom in Africa. Mali became even more wealthy under his rule. His riches came from mining salt and gold deposits in the Mali kingdom. Elephant ivory was another major source of wealth. During the reign of Mansa Musa, the empire of Mali accounted for almost half of the old world's gold, according to the British Museum, and all of it belonged to the king. He also owned the bamboo gold mines, which accounts for more than 50% of the world's gold supply today. Everyone came upon to Mali to get their hands on the gold, especially Europeans who were facing famine and poverty at that time. Not just wealthy, many travelers documented that Mali was a place of peace and learning during Mansa Musa's kingdom. The fame of Mansa Musa and his phenomenal wealth spread across the continent as he traveled from Hajj to Mecca between 1324 and 1325. His travels spanned 4,000 miles, passing through Sahara Desert and Egypt. Arab writers from the time said he was traveling with 60,000 men, including 12,000 slaves, all wearing brocade and Persian silk, and dozens of camels, each carrying 1.8 kg of gold bars, and heralds dressed in silks who bore gold staffs, organized horses, and handled bags. He took his entire royal court and officials, soldiers, entertainers, merchants, camel drivers, as well as long trains of goats and sheep for food. It was like a city moving through the desert. Musa's Hajj travel has been regarded as the most illustrious moment in the history of West Africa. Every Friday, Musa would stop and use his wealth and manpower to build a new mosque in one of the cities along the route of his pilgrimage. It is recorded that Mansa Musa traveled through the city of Timbuktu and Gao on his way to Mecca and made them a part of his empire when he returned around 1325. Mansa Musa had put Mali and himself on the map quite literally for the first time after this travel. In a Catalan atlas map from 1375, a drawing of an African king sits on golden throne atop Timbuktu holding a piece of gold in his hand. Mansa Musa returned from Mecca with several Islamic scholars including direct descendants of the Prophet Muhammad an Andalusian poet and an architect by the name Abu Ishaq Es Sahali who designed the famous Jingwarabar Mosque He returned for his mock in the mosque the king reportedly paid the architect 200 kg in gold which in today's money would be dollar 8.2 million In addition to encouraging the arts and architecture, he also funded literature and built schools, libraries and mosques. By the end of his reign, Musa had built the Great Library of Alexandria. It was known as the Sankor University and it could hold 25,000 people and more than 1 million manuscripts. Many of these historic buildings, both the schools and mosques are still standing today. As he donated so much gold that the overall value of gold decreased in Egypt for the next 12 years. The price of gold went down across the country and the economy collapsed. History says that Mansa Musa died in 1337, aged 57. But the date of Mansa Musa's death is still not certain. After his death, the empire was inherited by his sons, who could not hold the empire together. The smaller states broke off, and the empire crumbled. The late arrival of Europeans in the region was the final nail in empire's coffin. Well, after his death, Mansa Musa remained ingrained in the imagination of the world as symbol of fabulous wealth. There is no doubt that Mansa Musa spent or wasted a lot of gold during his pilgrimage. But Mansa Musa's prodigious generosity and piety, fair judgment as well as fine clothes and exemplary behavior of his followers did not fail to create a most favorable impression. Mansa Musa has more in common with the Marvel's first black superhero, Black Panther. Yes, the portrayal of an Wakanda king in Black Panther movie make you think of Mansa Musa. Next time when you watch Black Panther, don't forget to grasp the similarities between the two real and real kings of kings. Okay friends, hope you learned something new today. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon.
Thanks for watching. Meet you with a new content in my next video. And this is your Atif Khan signing off.